So folks, I have a very interesting story today, and it's based on a brand new medical report that's leaked out against Donald Trump's will and wishes that exposes just how sick he is and just how few months he has left, how this man's clock is ticking, and it's directly connected, guys, to his political downfall and his legal downfall as well. And we have a special exclusive report from a medical doctor that makes things absolutely devastating for Donald Trump. But we're going to build to that because it's connected to other remarks about Donald Trump's physical and mental illness and how that's been contagious to his movement and how it's being used against him. It's not being used to allow him to escape by, you know, pleading insanity or something, but being used against him by the people bringing him to justice. Let's just start with a growing sentiment from people in politics that Donald Trump has gone truly insane. Speech has nothing to do with the case. I mean, do you buy that? No, I mean, it's garbage, obviously. He's, look, Donald Trump is really good and he's, he's practiced this over decades of like saying something, but in a way that you could somehow conceivably, at least with a straight face, argue that you mean something else. You see that like through his whole life, through his whole career. Of course, he was sitting around angry, tweeted that out. He's mad. He's done other things to threaten, you know, boy, it's not me, but this could turn really violent if you do this. And this is going to destroy our country. And not to mention all the other fake tweets he's put out where he's talked about like, America is going to hell. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is going to hell. You see a man that is literally, I think, literally losing his mind. I don't even mean that metaphorically. I think he's actually going insane. And so, no, I don't think it's just protected political speech when you make a threat. Because, look, there are people out there that are going to take that seriously and they can go to take action. I had a number of them, you know, reaching out to me in my office saying that, you know, if Donald Trump said something bad at me, that they're taking that literally and they're going to come after me and my 18 month old kids. So this is a serious issue. And I agree with Ellie. Somebody's going to have to take action, I think. And yet uh, none of the other really, I mean, other than Governor Christie and, you know, Asa Hutchinson, Will Hurd are, are speaking of those running against him are really taking him to task for this. Nobody is. And that's in, you know, Chris Christie did a fantastic job. Again, Asa, Will Hurd, but everybody else is like in this magical land where somehow Donald Trump will just simply disappear from the political scene. Somebody in a white horse is going to come down and bestow upon them the presidency. And so they won't have made any of his followers mad. You cannot run against the front. I mean, being president is like the, you have to be a very strong person to be president of the United States. None of these candidates, besides those three, have shown that they're willing to take on even one of the weaker men in existence, Donald Trump. How can they take on Russia and China? It, it, to me, I, I scratch my head at this. I, I get how some of my former colleagues are that way now, but you're running for president. How, how, why so quiet then? Tia, the, the former president is obviously awaiting charging decisions in Georgia on whether he tried to legally overturn the election results in Fulton County. Have officials there indicated what they'll do? Now, I know maybe Kinzinger there is a little bit slow to the punch. We've been saying it for a long time, but it's becoming more and more mainstream to just come out and say that Donald Trump is insane, that he's truly lost his mind. And maybe it's fair to say that we thought he did six months ago, a year ago, six years ago, whatever it is, but that it is fair to say that maybe, you know, there's it, it's, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And so more and more people are jumping aboard that train because maybe six months ago somebody would have said well yeah he's pretty bad but i don't know if he's nuts but now they say he is and it really is a sign that this is bad and this is connected to this again this this leaked medical report that has donald trump sobbing tonight and it really does show how sick he is and the mental and the physical are connected and we're going to get to that but it's tied as well to how jack smith understands donald trump not just as a regular crook although he is, but as a traditional totalitarian maniac. Donald Trump, he is happy to get to trial because he's confident in how that trial is going to end up. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, autocrats uh, use propaganda. That's been true even as the nature of distribution has, has changed uh, in many uh, different eras. Um, and propaganda 
is dangerous precisely because you don't have to physically oppress people. You don't even need weaponry necessarily if you trick enough of them into this or that position, whether that's supporting authoritarianism or hating certain outgroups. I want to play that other piece of footage we unearthed where he makes a point that, again, who could say how things would echo, Renato, but uh, people have a choice. Uh, journalists, of course, have a choice, but people at home have a choice over what they want to repost on Facebook or whatever platform they use. Um, and I thought this was so striking that in a, in a related context um, of both authoritarianism and ethnic hate, uh, he talked about the ethical people who chose not to perpetuate things. Take a, take a listen. The accused in committing their crimes tried to amplify the damage they caused by exhorting the media in Kosovo to publish ethical journalists of Kosovo who refused to publish the documents that the accused attempted to provide them. Renato, this question is, is as much societal as legal. I'm not talking about, you know, a, a repost or a republisher's potential liability. I'm asking you, I guess, a deeper question about why you were a prosecutor, why you care about justice, which is, what do you think about his appeal to the idea that how we all exercise our choices in the face of propaganda matters um, and how that relates at home right now. Well, it's pretty profound. I have to say, I'm really struck by the way in which he has an understanding of, I would say, some of the softer ways in which people can exercise power, or influence, and commit misdeeds. I find it's such an interesting, different approach to Robert Mueller. Right? Robert Mueller was very old school. He saw things, I think, in the way that, you know, in a very black and white way that the Justice Department traditionally has. Jack Smith, you know, without that beard, you showed some baby face uh, video of Jack Smith. He's a, from a different generation. I think he understands the way an authoritarian can use these soft methods of increasing their power and staying in power. I think his experience prosecuting a, a, a sitting head of state, as you highlighted just a moment ago, I think really prepared him. So Jack has taken down maniacs like Trump. Again, Jack... You know, I'm sure that when he was a young prosecutor, he had regular cases. But for many years now, he's he hasn't dealt with typical criminals. He's dealt with dictators and big time people. And a lot of these people weren't just crooks, but insane, verifiably insane. Look at some of the biggest dictators. Remember the guy with the mustache from Germany? He was not just evil. He was a maniac. And I'm not necessarily comparing him and Trump, but both of them have kind of patterns of mental illness and corruption and physical illness and corruption that was maybe aided and abetted by substances. We can go on the co connections, but it's really true. And as we built to this medical report, one of the things they do is they know Trump is very sick and doesn't have much time left. He's knocking on death's door. But one thing they also know is that Donald Trump's mental sickness is actually a, a form of a viral contagion. And listen to what Trump supporters said just in the last couple days. Donald Trump has made these people mentally ill with his own sickness. Are Republicans and Trump supporters. Two daughters are Democrats. They can still come to Thanksgiving dinner. They still come. We still love them. <laughs> we visited as Trump was indicted a second time by the special counsel. Why are they attacking him so hard? Why are they going after this guy so hard? Does everybody really believe that everything that happened was exactly the way that the government's laying it out today? I don't. The friends and family around the table don't watch and don't trust CNN. There is reverence for Ronald Reagan here. But listen. The trust is gone. Reagan's optimism replaced by Trump's grievances. we got to find our own way to take care of ourselves. Reagan's disdain of big government replaced by Trump's distrust of just about everything. I think he thinks he was stolen from him. Still questions about the 2020 election. And I had a lot of people agree with him. Criticism of the Trump prosecutions. But nothing about that deal is the American way. I don't think. And this. If you think the United States should be supporting Ukraine in the fight against Putin, raise your hand. Nobody. You don't have to be that smart to put the, to, to connect the dots, right? And so are, is the war to cover up sins committed so you can cover your tracks? There's too much money that's been thrown over there. You think all the NATO countries would do what Biden told them to do because he's trying to cover up some Hunter Biden business deal by 
Um, it all depends on how uh, Zelensky, how much dirt he has on Biden to keep the money coming. That's 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 out there. Like I only played you a little bit there, but this is one of the things that leaked medical report notes in many ways, and that that uh, doctor has noted in many cases is that. Uh, you know, much like certain certain illnesses can be physically contagious, right? Like you spread them by coughing or whatever. Um, the, Trump's form of, of mental delusion has infected a good chunk of American society, not half, but maybe a third of American society. And you see nut bar things like that. Those people might have already been predisposed to being like that before Trump, but it's really Trump that activated them. And this is getting very dangerous. Now watch this and then we're going to get to this leaked medical report because this notes, again, how Donald Trump's sickness, his physical sickness and mental sickness is driving him to desperation. Assistant Attorney General for National Security at the U.S. Department of Justice, Mary McCord. Mary, I, I want to start with you. Talk to us about what we watched out of Utah and the timing, the president landing in Salt Lake City. Well, it's clear from uh, the court documents that were filed and also from the reporting that this is a man who's been making threats for some time. It wasn't like a new suddenly mm -hmm. the president's coming. I'm going to make a threat. He's been making threats for a months and months now. But here he had opportunity because he lives in Provo. He's not far from South, uh, from Salt Lake City. And we have the president actually going there. So I think that really heightens the level of danger here because a lot of times I think there's confusion about whether a threat made online is serious. You know, whether it's just somebody sort of talking big and using threatening language, but with no intent to carry it out. Well, now we see that there was an intent at least to try to carry it out. We see because of the arrest and the and the cache of weapons that have been seized that he had the means mm -hmm. to carry it out. And certainly he was, you know, in a proximity. Now, I'm not going to suggest he would have ever been successful in actually getting close enough to the president to, to get off a shot. But, you know, he was preparing to make an effort to go do this. So, you know, when we when we talk about what we can take seriously as a threat and what is just talk, we don't always know. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, for good reason, the FBI had been tracking this, paying attention to this and knew it was time to take action. But we don't always know that. And, and part of the problem with the, the rhetoric that you talked about in your opening is you can't watch everybody. You can't know what everyone's planning. And there will be individual actors who do seek to take action. And this isn't the first time we've seen this. Um, as you know, you know, after the search at Mar-a-Lago, there was an attack, an attempted attack on the FBI in Cincinnati. So, and there's others like that. So that it's very hard for law enforcement to know which threats online are going to materialize into actual physical, you know, attempts. So that's, that's, that's a man that's desperate. And when desperate men like Donald Trump act out, they're like a snarling wolf and they bite. And Donald Trump, unfortunate as it is, once had power and influence, once had power, still has influence, uh, you know, really hurts society. Like Donald Trump in many ways is as weak as he's ever been. But Donald Trump in that state of weakness has very, has relatively little to lose relative to what he used to have. And this is where the doctor's report comes in and it notes just how sick Trump is and how that sickness is essential to take him down. And it says here, Donald Trump, and this is Bandy Lee. She was a, a, she became famous for, for saying that Donald Trump is, you know, mentally sick. And we need to reckon with that fact when she says Donald Trump is a psychiatric case before all else. This should be obvious. Now the APA should repent shoveling us down, getting, getting me fired from Yale and plunging the nation into devastation because she's dared to speak out against Trump's mental illness. It should publicly apologize and finally do it societal duty psychiatry is not a purely subjective field one cannot pretend a problem does not exist indeed it is a field of medicine where scientific knowledge and clinical experience matter they should know this should donald trump have been a psychiatric uh, should have a have a psychiatric evaluation absolutely the judge can order one at any time that is what my and i and my colleagues have been trying to inform the nation about since 2016 and it notes down here below a, a couple days later but part of this report that donald trump does not want you to see from a medical doctor when it says successful prosecution also depends on understanding dangerous personalities those with dangerous personalities are 2.5 times more likely to evade conviction and 2.5 times more likely to receive reduced sentences even though they are more dangerous not less and so what she's saying is we have six months to take donald trump down 
Like, because with the timings and all this. Donald Trump has six months left to live as a free man if he gets away with it. If he doesn't get away with it, excuse me. Because if we, Jack's got to lock him up, he's got he's got like no buffer. He's got to convict him in like the next six months. That's why he's pushing for trials in like April uh, for the documents case, but he wants to go in January for the for the the insurrection case in in, in Washington proper. Six months. Donald Trump knows he's sick and dying, both figuratively but also literally. The man doesn't have much left, and that's why he's so desperate. Doctors are saying much the same. 